Facebook Live. Facebook Live, today is 19. Day 19 of my 90 day challenge. Welcome beautiful beings, everyone who is jumping on, say hello. <sighs> Tell me where you are watching from as I share this just for a moment into my group Femme Genius. I'm really excited, really excited about the topic tonight, guys. The three major blocks, so three major blocks that block you from the flow of manifestation and that block you ultimately from your dream creation. So as you are coming on, say hello. If this is your very first time catching me live, I would invite you to say that you're here. There are so many human beings that watch my lives and they just sit and watch from a distance and not tell me that they're up, that they're here. And so I would love to know who's coming on and who is witnessing this. So it looks like we have some friends coming on. I'm really excited about this topic here tonight. You're gonna wanna stay. You're gonna wanna stay for the remainder of this topic because this goes deep. I'm going to reveal to you why potentially you've been blocking the flow of manifestation and dream creation within your own life. And so, my friends, my name is Carla Sampson. I'm an aligned embodiment coach. I am a signature soul brand mentor. I help men and women accelerate on their feminine genius path into creating a business that is easy, a business made out of ease, a business made out of from pleasure and desire, a business made from living a life turned on and lit up. And so my friends, if that is something that you feel called to and interested in, I would say stick around for this Facebook Live because this is definitely going to be a juicy one. Now guys, I have been on a 90, I'm on a 90 day challenge right now. I'm on a 90 day journey into uh, coming live every single day for 90 days. And today is day 19 and just feeling, feeling some good energy around it. Also feeling like I have been doing so much course creation, so much course creation, and I want my course creation to be really in alignment with my Facebook lives. And so you guys are probably going to be hearing me speaking more and more and more about manifestation in my Facebook lives because that's really um, right now what I'm so passionate about and that I'm teaching the women in heart official intelligence at this time, uh, the whole quantum physics behind manifestation. And so if you guys are interested in this whole process of manifestation, I've got stuff that's going to blow your mind, <laughs> literally, because uh, of the deep, deep uh, inner work that I have done around this, around this process of manifestation and really creating from the inside out. And so my friends, Don's on here, and Arjun, and Brian, and Millicent, good to see you, all of my friends, beautiful beings, beautiful beings. If you are on, guys, say hello. Really, like, this, the energy always feels really exciting when people actually comment, and that feels so good. So I will invite you throughout this Facebook Live to really, like, pretend that we are sitting at a coffee or a tea shop together, and that we're literally just two friends hanging out, sitting at a coffee or a tea shop together, having a drink together and and just spending time shooting the shit talking about the crazy awesome things that inspire us and so i'm going to invite you really to um to be present here with me in this facebook live and really on all of my facebook lives i invite you just to comment because as we comment as we actually type things out and really engage within the information that we're bringing in it becomes less about the information and more about the integration so we actually begin to integrate information into our lives uh, as we engage with information. And so thanks Elise for that heart, beautiful friends, Amy's on, hello, hello, beautiful. And so my friends, the more that we really engage, and this is what this is for an opportunity for you to engage. And so this is an opportunity for you to begin to feel into, well, what am I manifesting in my life right now? So ask yourself, what is it that you're manifesting in your life right now? What is it that you, and, and if you don't know what the word manifestation means, it truly is bringing into fruition that in which we desire. And so, hey, Amy, beautiful. 
So bringing into fruition that in which we desire. So when you ask yourself, what is it that I'm manifesting? It's very simple. You have desires. You're a human being on this planet. And really your navigation system of what you move towards often is based on your desires. And so just ask it. So that's so the question of what is it that you're manifesting at this time? Just ask yourself, what is it that I desire right now? And it could be as simple as I desire to have a nice warm meal tonight. I desire to um, be able to take... Elise, hello beautiful friend! Yes, yes, yes! So you could say, I desire to walk on, uh, to take a walk uh, in the woods tomorrow. I desire to be in alignment and integrity with my highest good, or my highest being. I, uh, I desire, so just asking yourself, what is it? Boop, 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 Missy's on! Rachel's on! Hello beautiful beings! Ask yourself now. What is it that you desire within your life? And if you feel excited about it, guys, if you actually want it and if you actually desire it, I'm going to invite you right here, right now, in this present moment, type it into the chat. Let me know. What is it that you're desiring to call into your life at this present time? It could be a million dollars. It could be a beautiful mm, massage. It could be healing a part of your body that is in pain. It could be whatever it is. What is the desire? What is your true desire in this present time? Because where energy or where attention goes, energy flows. And so let's bring our attention right now in this present moment to our true desires. What is it that you desire? Write it into the chat. Patrick's here. And Genevieve's here. Hello, beautiful friends. So right now, guys, we're just talking about what it is that we truly desire. What is it that you desire in your life? Maybe you desire creating a loving, harmonious relationship within a relationship that's right now in turmoil. Just, you know, and I know that, I know that some of our desires can feel a little vulnerable and we're like, well, why would I put it out there into the chat? But let's think about things as vibration in this moment here now. Let's think actually about music. I'm, I'm going to put it in really simple terms. Thinking about music. So when music, when we play music softly, if you were to actually watch, I'm a, I'm a DJ, so I love to, to watch actually the wavelength of music as it plays. When we hear a note and it's playing softly, the, the, vi the, vibra the vibratory rate of that sound is like very, the, you can see like it's very quick and very fast and very small. Now, as the music grows louder, the vibratory wave of that sound gets bigger. And as we go louder and louder and louder and louder, the vibratory rate of that sound gets bigger. The, the wave gets bigger. And so if we think about this from our thoughts and feelings, which everything is vibration, but if we actually think about our thoughts and feelings and then think about that in the way of music, when we actually speak our desires into the world, or when we write our desires into like onto a journal or maybe we type them out it creates a new it creates a larger wavelength a larger state of vibration and so thus uh, it becomes closer to form because density density and form is a larger vibration so grace says where attention goes energy flows and brian says financial security and better health beautiful beautiful desires Yes, yes, yes. So, Adir is on here. Hello, friend. All right, guys. So, now we know. Now we know that when we actually begin to speak things into reality, it's like that word abracadabra. Does anybody on here know what that word abracadabra actually means? Elise says, I desire healing and loving help along the way and to develop healthy living practices. Yes. So beautiful, my friend. So, does anybody know what that word abracadabra means? It means I speak and as I speak, so does my, so do I create my reality. I speak and I create, I speak and I create. So as you guys are putting in your desires into this space, know that just by you having the courage to step up and show up and write down your desires, that you actually indeed are creating a greater wavelength that will ultimately allow for this to be part of your reality. So just on that level. 
So Grace says to be pain-free. Yes, yes, my friend. Mm, beautiful, you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you for writing your desires into, into, the, uh, into the text and into the chat here because this is going to help us to start to now because now that we have identified our desires and our manifestations of what it is that we actually desire and require within our lives, which for many of us, which it looks like for many it's living pain-free or for many it's uh, financial security or for many it is healing and developing healthy lifestyles and Patrick says freedom from oppressive forces. Hmm. So knowing our desires because how do, we f how do we figure out what our desires are? We actually sort of have to know what we don't desire, right? To know what we truly do desire, we actually sort of have to go through the painful situations to know that we truly don't desire them because how would we know that we desired this if we didn't have the opposite? And so for those of you who are experiencing pain right now, just know that there is a gift. There's a gift within that pain. And I know that's I, I know what it feels like to be in pain, so I totally understand that that's like the last thing that you want to hear right now. But can we begin to understand that first we have to go through what we don't desire to actually go through what we do desire, to actually figure out what we do desire. And so when you guys are writing in your desires here, how do we write them? How do you start to express them in a way that you truly like, what is the, what is the actual desire? What is the actual desire behind that? To be healthy, to be pain-free. These are all so beautiful. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for sharing your desires. Okay, now we're gonna dig in a little bit into what blocks these desires from coming into beingness. What blocks the, the flow of manifestation? What blocks the flow of energy moving into our lives? Because now we do know, science actually proves it, and actually on the quantum level, it, it, science has proved and it's actually very well accepted now that, that all of reality is based on these little tiny subatomic particles. These little tiny subatomic particles called photons or quanta. And so if we, if we look at, actually if you turn your, your face away from the screen here for a second guys and just look at the space around you you're probably like, that's empty space. Like, look around, look at the space around you, in your room or wherever you're at, just look at this space and you're like, is it, I'm gonna ask you a question, is it filled? Is that space filled? You'll probably say, you just asked me to look into the space in my room. It's not filled with anything, it's space. But my friends, now it's been proven that actually within all of the space, within the space between a nucleus and an electron, which seemingly seems like a lot of space, within all of the space in the room that you're sitting within, within all of the space that is, within, with, that is between a, uh, a star and a galaxy, which seems like a huge amount of space, that there's actually something within that space, that actually something is there. And these are those photons, these subatomic particles of light. And I could go deeper and deeper and deeper into this, but what we now know is that human DNA, so us, uh, human DNA in our emotional state of being, in our intentional state of being, actually has a direct relationship. It influences all of those particles of light. And those particles of light are actually, they're actually energy. And so we have the power to call these subatomic particles of light, this energy, into our lives. And we also have the power to do that with our emotional state of being. And so all of these three tools, all of these three blocks that I'm going to give you here, they all have to do with us kind of giving into and choosing a state of emotions, a state of emotions that ultimately is not in alignment with our highest good. And so the three, the three blocks that I'm going to give us, these are actions that we probably take in our lives, but I want to get, I want to get it really clear that these actions create a state of disharmony within our lives. 
Michaela's on here, Michelle's on here, Chad is on here. Hello, beautiful friends. So, so if you're just joining, we have been writing our desires. We've been writing our desires into the chat. So I'm going to invite you. If you have a desire, if, you, if there is something within your life that you're manifesting, I will invite you to write it into the chat now as we continue onwards. So we now know that our emotional state of being has a direct influence on life around us, which means that now is the time to take direct responsibility for how we are feeling. And these blocks ultimately put us in a state of not feeling seriously happy or seriously good or seriously in alignment with our highest good and our highest truth. And so I'm going to just invite you not to be judgmental on yourself when I say these three blocks, not to look into like, oh, I totally do that and I'm so angry with myself now. Boo -boo, woo -woo -woo. That's not the intention here, guys. The intention is just simply to observe it in our lives, to witness it. And once we witness it, then we can see it. We can see where we do it all the time. And, and from being able to witness it and observe it in our lives, that's how change happens and that's how transformation occurs. And so my friends, number one, it's called comparison. Comparing yourself to others will block the flow of energy moving in towards your life that will ultimately create what it is that you truly desire. Because when we are comparing ourselves to someone else's story, we are judging our own experience. We are judging our own life experience. When we are comparing ourselves to others in a way that doesn't feel empowering, you know, there are two ways to to compare ourselves to others, in one way we can see a mentor and compare ourselves to our mentor and get really inspired to move in the direction of our mentor. And on the other side, we compare ourselves to others and then we diminish our being. We diminish ourselves because we're like, oh, I'm not there yet. Or, oh, she's so far ahead of me, I'll never be there. Or, oh, look at her living this life that looks so beautiful. I could never have that. And if we start to get these mental thoughts, if we start to roll around in these mental thoughts of comparing ourselves to other, especially women, of comparing ourselves to other women, these feelings of comparison, competition, these feelings are ultimately going to block our true desires because you have very, very, very unique desires. Like, in fact, there's nobody else on this planet Earth that has the same quality of desire that you actually hold. Hey, Rachel, good to see you, beautiful. You actually have this most unique container of desires that not a single other person will ever have the same desires as you. And so to look at another woman and, to, and for her to be in alignment with her desires and for you to compare yourself against her, that is blocking the flow of your desires wanting to come towards you. And so when we compare ourselves to someone else, when we say, oh, I'll never be there or I'll never be like she is or I'll never be who that is, you feel that energy like it's like this it, it's, a, it's a dense energy that doesn't feel so good in the body. And then it totally blocks us from the space of inspiration, the space of potential of moving towards our desires. And so just notice in your life, are there spaces still that you compare yourselves to others? And this can be so easy, guys, because we we're on social media. And we're like, shit, scrolling, 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 shit, scrolling, 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 shit. If we're constantly doing that, if we're on social media and using it destructively in that way, <laughs> time for a social media cleanse and come back into your desires because that ultimately is going to be of service to you finding the flow and being in that space, that portal of, or that, portal of, of uh, that invitation for your own inspirations. 
And so number one is comparison. We want to just get out of the comparison. Now, how do we, now how do, so I'm not, I'm not going to leave you with the block and not tell you how to continue to go forward. So here, here it goes, guys. When you find yourself comparing yourself to others, when you find yourself comparing, so just give me a yes. If you're watching this right now and you find yourself comparing yourself to others on the regular, just give me a yes. Type in yes or give me a heart or give me a wave or something. Just let me know, let me know, is this relevant for you? Is this something that you see in your life? Do you compare yourself to others? And no judgments here. There's, this is not a judgment space. This is just a simple observation space because when we observe, that's when we can transform. And so... When we find ourselves, when we find ourselves judging or when we find ourselves comparing ourselves to others, I'm going to invite you instead to witness that your judgment is actually your desire. There, when you judge yourself, when you compare yourself against someone else, it's actually a desire within you that is saying, I wish I had what she has, or I wish I had what she, or I wish I did what she does, or I wish I could do that. Yes, Elise, totally. Hey, Angela, hello, beautiful. And so, yeah, when, so in, so when we're scrolling on Facebook or when we're like looking at other people's stuff and we see and we're like, oh yeah, I am totally judging and comparing myself to this person's reality, this person's success, this person's whatever. So know, like, see it as actually a desire within you. Hey, Aparna, Aparna, am I saying that right? So see it as actually a desire. That there's something, there's this like twinge, this tweak of inspiration that lives within you that is, that is telling you that you actually desire something that is outside of you. And so it's an opportunity to look back into the self. Looking back into the self and being like, well, what is it? What is it that she has or what is it that about her that is a reflection of myself that I wish to step into? And then we can feel inspired by that woman instead of feeling this, this sense of, of comparison or jealousy. Hello, beautiful instead of feeling this comparison or jealousy, we actually choose. It's an active choice to choose to actually see it as a potential for stepping more into that in which we desire. Yay. Beautiful. So number one, my friends, comparison. Staying away from comparison. And in fact, changing the whole energy grid of comparison, changing it within yourself into inspiration. I'm inspired by this woman. I'm inspired by what she is because, because, she, because she's in my reality, it means that there's a potential that I too have the potential to have what I desire within her. She is a mirror for you. And so we can begin to see her as that. Yay, my friend. So if you are just joining, we're talking about desires, manifestation, and what blocks the, the flow of energy within our lives. Thanks, Rachel. Love you, love you, love you. Lots, lots, lots. <laughs> that makes me feel so happy. <laughs> All right, so number two, guys. Number two in blocking the flow, in blocking the flow of what, of actually what, our desire of blocking the flow of our desires and our manifestations and our dream creation. Number two is what I call information overload. This can get really easy for the for the active entrepreneur, or for the superstar seed, or for the <laughs> the ones that are like super involved with and so passionate about so many things. If you're out there, give me a wave, give me a high five. 
you know it because you're like this renaissance person. You're like this renaissance child of the earth that's like, I came here on planet earth and I cannot choose one thing because I'm inspired by everything and I'm inspired by all the things and I just want to try all of the things and I want to do all of the things and I just want to play all of the time. <laughs> you know it. If you're her or you're him, you know it. Totally. Like, this is the the woman who is like, just inspired by all of the things and she's actually very talented at a lot of different things she's very she's very talented on a broad spectrum of different in different arenas and th and this can this can be a great benefit because you are multi-talented and you have so many gifts to share with this planet and share with this world but at the very same time if you're constantly 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 taking in new information this information overload or this information intake, then there's no spaciousness in our lives to be an original creator. And your desires come, you actually, the, the easiest way to l truly listen to what it is that you desire are what I have found to be either those moments like those divine sparks of inspiration where we could be doing anything random we're just driving totally zoning out it's like our brains go into the theta waves and we are like in that kind of dreamy meditation state and like boom a great inspiration flows through or another way like that we experience our true desires is through meditation or through these moments of being quiet maybe in a yoga class or maybe you're swim like you're underwater you're swimming or in these spaces where you're not bringing in any information. You're just simply being quiet. And just by that moment, that opportunity to just simply be quiet within yourself, you're really inviting in for what I call original creation. So it's, you know, who knows where it comes from, I sort of know where it comes from in terms of the source of, of all of creation and all of life, but at the very same time, like, you happen to be this vessel and this channel to receive that information at that time. And if we're constantly taking in other people's information, if we're constantly taking in new information, and I'm not saying, like, I'm a super information taker in her. I love to be podcasting. I love to be listening to music. I love to be, like, reading articles. I love to be reading books. I love to be writing all of the time. I'm like a super intaker. And so that's why I found this within myself of like, when I'm constantly in intake mode, I have, I'm not giving the universe, God, goddess, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. I'm not giving that essential energy, that life energy. I'm not giving it the time that it needs to really move. And, and I'm not giving myself time to truly receive. And this is a big one, guys, is that if we are constantly in movement, constantly moving towards this and moving towards that, and we don't, ha we don't really take time to appreciate the gifts. When we don't take time to appreciate the gifts, we are blocking the flow of the gifts, of more gifts coming into our lives. And so if we're constantly in intake mode, we're not going to be in those receptive states where the real, the real magic actually happens. This, this is... A big part of what I teach in a lot of my courses is this feminine receptive state where we we move totally out of action and we move totally into the inner alignment zone where we just simply can manifest from just being who we are. And so if we're constantly in energy motion and we're constantly moving, 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 it's going to be, we're going to be blocking the flow of actual, of energy moving in towards us, moving it, blocking the flow of that receiving. So number two is information overload. Number three, last but not least, this comes directly from one of my mentors. His name is Keith and he calls it FUD. F U D FUD acronym standing for fear uncertainty doubt <laughs> FUD <laughs> thanks for the hearts <laughs> FUD fear uncertainty and doubt so when we actually uh, when we are in that emotional vibratory state of well, let's, let's start with uncertainty because that's a big one. 
when we are uncertain that our dreams, wishes, and desires are going to come in towards us. Certainty is essential for manifestation. And so if you are even the littlest bit uncertain, you've blocked the flow of this energy coming in. <laughs> Don't be an Elmer Fudd. Yes. Yes, that is awesome. That is super silly and I love that. So, yes, uncertainty. If we are not certain, you have to be completely courageous and confident within the way that you walk towards your manifestations and dreams. If we have any uncertainty, we're blocking the flow. Similarly, same with doubt. If we have doubt, same deal. We have to know. It has to be an innate inner knowingness. This is another thing I teach in a lot of my feminine, uh, my feminine rising courses is that, is, is that we, is this courage, this courage to say yes to say yes to what we truly desire as women. For so long as women, we have been diminished. Our desires have been asked to be put into tiny little boxes and we've been asked to be diminished within our desires. And this is a time when we are awakening truly, when the feminine is rising truly on this planet and we have this beautiful opportunity to be like, oh, I actually am my desires. I'm not separate from my desires. My desires are me and I can fully live them out here now in this present moment. And then fear, of course, any extension of emotions that, that, block, that, that, uh, that bring us into fear is going to ultimately be blocking that flow of manifestation and dream creation. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. FUD. Hey Enrico, hello friend. So my friends, really quick, running through the last, running through the three, just so that we have a little bit of hmm, closure within the space. Number one, comparison. Number one is comparison will block you from creating your dreams. Don't compare yourself. Stop comparing yourself to others. You are an amazing, original creator, human being. You have amazing ideas and you are this authentic, beautiful human. <laughs> Why compare yourself to anyone else? Number two, information overload. So when we take on too much information, when we're constantly in this process of downloading other people's ideas, it's very challenging for us to upload new original thought, new original thought creation. And number three, finally, FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We must have a knowingness, a courageous confidence in walking towards what it is that we truly desire and truly wish and truly know that we deserve here now at this present time. Hey, Melissa, good to see you, beautiful. All right, my friends, that is it. Those are the three. Go back over them again, write them down, get them into your body, get them into your knowingness, observe them in your life because ultimately I want every single one of you to be manifesting and creating your wildest dreams because when all of us on this planet are manifesting and creating our wildest dreams, think about the magic that this planet has in store. I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your night.